We're going to call to order. Uh, today is Thursday, May 16, 2019, fiscal year 20 operating budget hearings with the Budget and Finance Committee and Metro Council. Before us, we have the community education. We have Ms. Meredith Harding. I'll let you do the introductions and then you can walk us through your budget. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as she said, I'm Mary Beth Harding. I'm the executive director of the department, and I have with me our commission chair, Carla Coleman Garcia. Nashville Community Education has had a great year, and we would not have been able to do it without the support and hard work of our commission, our staff, and our instructors. As a reminder, the Community Education Commission provides affordable personal and professional enrichment for adults in the community. We offer a wide variety of classes, including art, fitness, languages, career development, cooking, technology, and much more. Some of our most popular topics include Spanish, sewing, gardening, and yoga. Class costs average $35, with fees ranging from free to about $130. I am currently providing our summer catalog and our FY18 annual report for you to review. Summer classes begin May 28th, so there's plenty of time to still register for those. Um, we'd love to see some council members in classes if you guys have some extra time. In the last four years, our program has experienced exponential growth. Starting in 2015, we had around 2,200 students and the revenue was uh, almost $60,000. This year, we've had over 4,000 enrollments in more than 400 classes offered by 125 different instructors. As of April, we had already collected over $130,000 in revenue from class fees and supplies. With summer registration still open, I expect to see that revenue grow by the end of June. We've continued partnering with organizations and fellow Metro departments, including the Farmers Market, Nashville Public Library, and MMPS through our Spanish and Kurdish for Educators courses that teach education-focused Spanish and Kurdish to MMPS teachers. We also continue to partner with the UTTSU Extension and new this year, the Metro Business Assistance Office to bring free informational classes regarding Metro contracts to small and diverse businesses. A majority of our programming takes place in the Cone School in Sylvan Park. However, in the past three years, we have made an effort to get classes into more neighborhoods throughout the county. This spring, we offered classes at the Cone School, Wright Middle School in Southeast Nashville, Inglewood Elementary in East Nashville, and the newly renovated Madison and Smith Springs Community Centers. We also offered classes with partners at the Nashville Farmers Market, the Southern Squeeze, NECAT, and Plate Tone Printmaking. We continue to receive many requests for classes in other neighborhoods. However, we are a small staff and are currently at capacity in terms of time and resources. In the coming year, we will likely remain status quo in the amount of classes that we can offer. We are hoping to open a location in Antioch this fall, as that is an area we have received many, many requests for classes in, but it probably means that we have to decrease or cease offering classes at our Madison and Smith Springs locations, and we'll have to limit the amount of classes and the length that we can offer at the new Antioch location. In the coming years, we will need to add another staff member in order to grow into more locations and develop more classes at those locations. But this year, we will work toward developing classes and maintaining our success using the resources that we have. Our other goals within our department focus on ensuring we are serving all Nashvillians. This past winter, we took a comprehensive look at our current demographics, and we did determine that we are currently underserving people of color, the Latinx community, and those without college experience. Our goals for the next three years are concentrated on increasing these specific demographics to better reflect our population. We plan on doing this by bringing classes to new neighborhoods when we can, increasing our participation in community events and meetings, recruiting bilingual instructors, and as well as recruiting more instructors that represent those demographics. But again, we will need at least one more staff member and more funding for instructor stipends and materials in the next three years in order to achieve our ideal growth. Although our classes are affordable, we believe costs should never stand in the way of lifelong learning, which is why we provide an accessible scholarship program. So far in FY19, we've provided $1,000 in scholarships, and we will continue to promote this program through the summer and next year. The process to apply is very easy. Interested students just need to send in some sort of documentation to show financial need. That can be a W-2, it could be a receipt of other assistance. There's a lot of options to send that in, as well as a 
word paragraph describing why they are seeking the aid and why they want to take specific classes. We have no cap on income and want applicants to use that essay to explain any financial situations that may not appear on a tax form. Applicants can mail or drop those documents off with the registration form to our offices at 4805 Park Avenue or email copies to cecinfo at nashville.gov. In the year to come, we hope to maintain our enrollment and revenue numbers with manageable increases in both, while working toward increasing the diversity of our participants and offerings. We will continue to seek out partnerships that are mutually beneficial and can help us reach even more citizens. Thank you for allowing me the time to share our work with you today, and we look forward to enriching the diverse fabric of Nashville. Thank you so much. Any council members seeking recognition? Councilwoman Dow. Thank you. I heard you mentioned that you're looking to open up a location out in the Antioch area. Have mm -hmm. you put any thought as to where in the Antioch area? Yeah, we've already been in discussion. We're waiting to hear back from MMPS. We do like to partner with MMPS Community Achieve Schools. That's been a really successful way to make partnerships. So we're just waiting to hear back from that. We've also talked to Southeast Community Center. Um, and we've talked to a few other locations that are sort of right there in that centralized area, right off 24 near the Global Mall, near the Southeast Community Center, getting to that area as close as possible. We used to have classes, but they were not as conveniently located. So we're trying to get something that's a little bit closer to the interstate so that it's a little easier for people to get to, you know, after work especially. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that because I know um, historically we've had community education in our area and has not been as successful mm -hmm. um, because of the location. So I'm glad to see that um, you all are partnering with our uh, school system. I think that's a wise and wonderful idea and you'll see a lot more turnout. So thank you, looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you, Councilwoman Dow. Councilwoman Porterfield. Thank you, Chair. Councilwoman Dow asked the first part of my question. The second part of my question, uh, did you say that you guys are currently in the Smith Springs Community Center? Yeah, we did teach a few classes in the Smith Springs Community Center this fall and spring, and it was a really wonderful partnership. What we are finding in working with parks is that they also have their own programming, and there's just a limited amount of space. And with our limited resources and limited staff, it's not really making sense for us to have one six-week class, you know, a session at this place where we have to send a staff member, or at least sometimes like in Smith Springs, they didn't have um, projectors, so we had to go every night. Um, so we're trying to find locations where we can have at least three to five classes a night to make it sense for the resources that we have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Porterfield. Any other council members seeking recognition? Okay, seeing none, thank you, Ms. Harney, and everything that you do for this city. This concludes your budget hearing. If we can have the Board of Education make your way down. <laughs>